So you need just to substitute these two terms into that uh, huge expression. Now, regarding the, the last time, we tried to derive the electrostatic uh, equations using the, from the starting from the postulates. And uh, as we said, what is essential in the electromagnetic field theory is being able to write the essentials. For example, what is the essential? The essential is to read carefully what is A theta and A uh, phi here and sub substitute carefully in the expression of the curl of a vector field in spherical coordinate system because this is uh, it's spherical coordinates. So similarly, uh, the tricks are not difficult. We just need to be a little uh, uh, careful. So let's let's see an example. Let's try to use Gauss law to find the potential or the electric field in a in a spherical system. So this is. I leave this one like a small exercise for you. You work on this one, and hopefully I'll try to get an answer from you uh, soon. Meanwhile, let me see. I have some comments here. Okay. Sergio, I'll start. I was just looking at the comments you uh, shared with me before a while. So let's let's think about this uh, exercise. Let's think. Let's assume that we have a sphere, which is me, uh, which has, which is charged over the whole volume. And uh, in this sphere, let's assume that the density is equal to some alpha r, and this density, this is. What is the volume density of the charge? What is the unit? This is Coulomb per meter cube, okay? So I want to get an answer from you. What is the unit of alpha then? If rho is uh, Coulomb per meter cube, what is the unit of alpha? Uh, using your microphones, can you tell me what, what's the unit of alpha? Okay, Sergio, I call you to take on your duty. So what is the unit of alpha if the unit of this row is Coulomb per meter cube? Is it Coulomb per meter uh, to the power of four? It is, yes. It should be this way, to Coulomb per meter to the power of four. Because if we multiply this by another meter, we get Coulomb per meter cube. Okay, so you are correct. Thank you for uh, for the comment. So that's the unit of this one. So we have to be uh, really careful here. Let's move on. So we want to know. The question is this: uh, E R E equal to E R. Find it. So we want to know what is the electric field as a function of R, starting from here up to infinity. So this is the law. Uh, the charge density of the sphere as a function of r. Apparently, the charge density at the origin is equal to zero because that's when the radius is zero. And uh, so let's have an example. When r is equal to zero, rho is zero. When r is equal to capital R, the charge density is equal to alpha r. Okay? So this is how the charge density changes. And apparently, the charge density, if we draw it like this, this is going to be as a function of R, where here we have a capital R, so this is a row. It looks like what kind of function are we going to have? We, have, we expect a multiplication of excitability to the CI in their cases. A function, a function is mirror. This function is the function of what with respect to R? Is it a linear, quadratic, cubic relationship, exponential dependency? Linear. Linear, okay, that's what I expect from you. So you expect a straight line, okay? So we expect a straight line up to this point. And then this is rho R, capital R, and immediately this drops to zero. Okay, so let's assume we have more charges. So this is the dependency that we have. Then what we need to do next is we have to use the Gaussian law, which the Gaussian law it states 
the EDS, the flux in intensity, sorry, the flux integral or the surface area integral of E with respect to S, this is equal to the Q enclosed and closed Q over epsilon zero. Okay, so this is uh, what this is a Gauss law, okay, and we derived this one last time on the postulates of electrostatics. So now, what is difficult in electromagnetic field theory? The only difficult thing is being able to find the Q, nothing else. So let's look carefully both sides of the equation. So the electric field, let's assume that we are somewhere here. We pick a random volume area element somewhere uh, in here between an inner area which is in red color and an outer red area which is in black. Now, uh, in the surface area element, it has a spherical symmetry. We can expect that the, that the E, E itself, E also can be written as AR times E. Okay? So the electric field, we know that if the charge is positive, let's assume it's positive, the direction of the electric field, because of symmetry, it spreads out like AR. So this is the E. Then the DS, the surface area element, which is also a vector, this is equal to AR also times DS. Okay, because we know that the surface area, the vector of the surface area element, it points outwards uh, with respect to the enclosed volume. So if we have a volume and a surface area which is enclosed in this volume, the direction of the area is pointing out of the volume. So that's why we have this. If these two elements are like this, then what is E dot ds? E dot ds, we first look at they are in the same direction, AR and AR here, so we get one. So this is going to be equal to E times the ds, okay? And then let's look at the, but the question is, what is this? What is the unit surface area uh, element? At, at the same, then, this was the first part. Let's write, let's write for example, so what is a Q? What is a charge that is, that is enclosed? The charge that is enclosed, it's uh, any integral from zero to R, of rho d volume, okay? So this is the, the charge, and this is equal to the integral from zero to r of alpha r, so this is the rho, right? And what is d volume? d volume element is, is in fact the volume that we see here, which is enclosed between the uh, the red inner circle and the black outer circle. So uh, this is the example that often one can use, one can use, is to assume that this deep volume element is the volume of the uh, skin of an orange, which always for the skin of a football. So you get the, the leather of the, of the football, the volume that is, it, uh, it occupies in space, it's equal to the surface area times the thickness. So this D volume, the surface area, is 4 pi r squared times the thickness, which is infinitesimally small quantity dr. Okay? So this is going to be equal to alpha and 4 pi. They are constant, so we can get them out. It's 4 pi alpha. Then we have the integral of r cube dr. Here we get r cube dr, and the integral of r cube dr, it's equal to, uh, what is the integral here? It's r to the power 4 over 4. So these 4s cancel out, we get pi alpha r to the power 4, pi. Okay, so this is the, this is the q, this is charge, okay? So the unit of this one, it's a, uh, it's cooler. So let's, let's not forget this. And then let's come back to this expression. 
We have EDS. What was EDS? EDS is E, but E electric field is the unknown. 4 times 4 pi i squared. This is all equal to the Q, where Q is, and the, this is equal to pi alpha r to the power of 4 over epsilon 0. It looks like we have a couple of terms to cancel out. We have this r to the power squared, this is r to the power 2. We have pi here, pi, which means that this electric field is going to be equal to alpha r squared over uh, 4 epsilon 0. But this is valid only when r is smaller than r. Okay? So the final answer using Gaussian Gauss law is this. But this is valid only for this uh, range. So it looks like if we plot, if this is the the electric field as a function of r, if, if let's plot this in, in red. So we know that the, the quadratic function, the y-axis, this is the charge density, but just for to make sure, so the electric field is going to be a quadratic uh, relationship with respect to r. So we'll have a parabola similar to anything that looks like this y is equal to ax squared. Okay? So this is how the electric field changes. And then, uh, so this is up to, this is not to scale, but let's assume that this is up to the, or let's, let's do this better, let's do a better job. Uh, the electric field, let's assume it goes like this. Uh, this is, it looks like it's, this is linear, this is quadratic with respect to R, but what happens with the electric field beyond the radius? So if we come out at this point P, what is the electric field? One thing is for sure that the total charge enclosed in this new area, okay, so this will be the new Gaussian area. The new Gaussian area, the area that it encloses the charge inside, the charge is up to R, up to this point, which means that if we solve this problem for, so this was the Gauss law, and this gave this answer for, for R smaller than uh, capital R, and now let's assume when R is larger than R, larger than the radius of the sphere, the Q enclosed, what is Q enclosed? Q enclosed, this should be equal to, we look at this expression, Q enclosed, we, we set here R equal to capital R. So this is equal to pi alpha times the capital R to the power 4. Okay, so this is the maximum charge that can be uh, enclosed for all the regime. So now, here we get that E equal to times 4 pi r squared, this is equal to pi alpha r to the power 4. Let me check how much you can see on the board. I think you do see all of it. Over epsilon 0. But here, notice that r is larger than r. These r's, they, they cannot be cancelled the same way that we, that we cancel them here. Okay? They are not the same r. Now this is larger. But uh, we can cancel out the spice and the electric field here is equal to uh, alpha r to the power 4 over 4 epsilon 0, 1 over r squared, okay? So it looks like, so this is the answer when r is larger than the capital R, and it looks like the electric field in this, uh, up to this R, is proportional to uh, R squared, but beyond that, it's proportional to 1 over R squared. So we get that this would be the graph of the electric field as a function of R. So again, we can say that electric field is proportional to 1, sorry, not this, It's proportional to R squared, or 
are smaller than the capital R, and the electric field is proportional to 1 over R squared when R is larger than uh, R. Okay, so this was uh, uh, an, an example where we have this specific uh, uh, charge density. Now, assuming that the red color is visible to you, we could also resolve this equation, this uh, problem again, by, if we assume that the charge density is not alpha r, but is constant over all, which means that in black, if the charge density is a straight line, which is made possible by this. So instead of this alpha r, let's write in red, just alpha. Then the, the unit of alpha would be what? Would be just a Coulomb's over meter to the power of three. Okay. This would be the, the unit of alpha, if it is in the second case. And then this would be the same. The only thing that would change would be this uh, alpha r, the charge density, would be just alpha. It would be a constant that would, would be taken out of the integral. And we would have the integral of r squared dr. Integral of r squared dr would be equal to r cube over 3. R, no, this is a mistake. r cube over, over 3. So here, this would be modified again also. Let's see what is left out. This 4 would not be cancelled out with respect to 4. So we would have pi alpha 4 r cube over 3. So this would be the enclosed charge. So this expression here would be equal to uh, pi alpha for r cube over 3. So this would be the new uh, expression. This is 4 pi r squared. Let's keep this the same in black. 4 pi r squared. And this will be modified, so all the red ones are the modified versions, the modified with respect to the previous exercise. And here we get that this pi is cancelled out, the 4 is cancelled out, and then it looks like this r squared, it will be cancelled out, we have only one r here. So the electric field then would be, let me check what is left out, this is alpha, uh, alpha r over 3, okay? So this is a new electric field. Then if we come here, the total charge enclosed here, uh, this would be We substitute, uh, this is 4 over 3, 4 over 3, capital R cubed. Okay, but then this would be equal to 4 over 3 epsilon 0 r cube. Then there is not much change here, but that's, uh, it looks like uh, this is 4 over 3. We have a pi alpha for God, no pi alpha is here. So pi alpha is there, then the expression here would be this 4 is cancelled, this pi is cancelled, pi and 4 are cancelled, and we would have that the new electric field is equal to alpha r cube over 3 epsilon 0, uh, 1 over r squared. So, what happened here is that before we had this combination, but now the electric field would be proportional to R for R smaller than capital R, and here the electric field would be proportional to what is the new expression? It's one, it's again one over R squared. Uh, yes. 
now here we saw two different examples with different charge densities and we get this uh, behavior in the first case and this behavior in the second case. And first case and second case, what they were is that in the first case we had a charge density which was linear with R, which looked like this. In the second case we had a tussle volume and things changed uh, accordingly. Now this was how we uh, represent the Gaussian Gauss law for charge distributions, okay, for charges, charge distribution that extend over space. And for these, we made use of the simple electric field expressions and the potentials which we have them in uh, simple electrostatics. So, the expression that we can use as a basic are this V, the potential, is KQ over R, okay, so that's, that's the potential. If this is, but this is for a point, for a point charge. Meanwhile, we can write the same thing that the infinitesimal is called dB. It's equal to k dQ over R, okay? And the electric field for a point charge, I think we remember this simply, this is k Q over R squared. And the infinitesimal is called electric field for charge distribution, this would be k dq over r squared. So this is how uh, we modify these. So let's have a look at, at it for an example. Let's assume that we have a ring. Okay, we have a ring which is just empty inside and has has some charge density. Okay, and we want to know the potential at some point p at a distance length at a, at a distance r l. Okay, L is in meters. Now let's have the radius here as A. Okay, and uh, we want to know what is the potential at point P right here. Then, as we said before a few minutes, we might say this very often, uh, the, the only difficult part in uh, electromagnetic field theory courses where the mathematical apparatus, it looks challenging, the only difficulty is being able to write down the ex expressions in a uh, in a careful way. So let's say we want to find the potential here. What is the first thing that we do? We need to use this expression, and the first thing we need to define is dQ. What is the infinitesimally small charge density here? Well, we write this one dQ. It's somewhere up there which is written as this dq, which is in coulombs, should be equal to the charge density, which in this case, the charge density, let's assume, since this, the charges here are allocated in line, in a, in a line, let's assume that the charge density is coulomb, uh, so let's assume that this charge density is lambda, which has units of coulombs per meter, okay? It should be per meter, this is the unit. So in this course, when we use these brackets, we mean that we're talking about the unit of the uh, quantity of interest. So this is coulomb per meter because the charge distribution is extended over uh, lengths. So what is dq here? How can one write the arc length of a, of, a, of a wire. Can I get an answer from you? So we have, a, let's say, we have a, a, a line extended like this, and we want to find what is this arc length here. Can you help me with this? So what is the length of this wire? So if we get a wire and we want to rotate this one across here, I'm trying to draw this one in red, I hope it's visible. So all we know is that we have this angle theta and this radius r. What is the length of this r length here? Can you uh, answer this to me? R d theta, Professor. Sure, they, uh, anyway, that's it. So this d l or the length element, this is r r theta. Is the angle which is a condition of rotator, scratches. But we assume that we have an infinitesimally small angle, so this is also equivalent to r d theta. Okay. So here, we just show it like this. We have an infinitesimally small angle, and this is equal to lambda, uh, which has units of 
uh, coulombs per meter times R d theta. R d theta, which is reduced by the infinitesimally small uh, angle. But the thing is that this A, this R, we assign this one as A. Or let's, let's use it R, it doesn't matter. You can use here R. And this R d theta, this has units of meters. So it looks like the units are good now. Now, since we have this dq, uh, the potential, the overall potential, it should be written as v is equal to the integral of dv. Okay? So that's, uh, that's all we need to do. We just need to add over dv, and the dv is k dq, dq, allow me to take this out, dq is lambda r d theta, lambda r, d theta over r. Is it correct? What do you think? Let's be a little careful. This is not r, because r in fact is the distance from here to here. Okay? And this distance from this point charge density to this point, we can write this one as r squared plus l squared square root. Okay? Because that considers the distance. To the, to the point of interest. So that's why it's not always good to use the R as R. We could have used here A. But that's fine, this is R squared plus L squared square root. Okay? And then, so this is the integral. That's all we need to do. So what was the most difficult part so far? The difficult part, not the difficult part, was first we have to determine carefully what is DQ with it. So we did this successfully. The second part was just being able to write this r. Okay. DQ, it was easy. r is a distance in this way, which in the general sense, this r is, it, is this expression here. Then let's identify which quantities are constants that we can take out of the integral. Uh, can you help me here? So what push up the to me here? Okay. Oh. Lambda. Two and three together. And there are layers constant. R is also a constant. Because it's the radius of this of this uh, ring. And we are not changing, right? So this is also a constant. You are right. Okay. So D theta. So it looks like all of these are constants. We can take these out of the integral. So we are left here k lambda r over r squared plus l squared square root times 2 pi. That's it. Okay? You are, you are right. So d theta is the only quantity which remains inside. But, and we know that the integral of d theta is equal to what? The integral and the differential, they are inverse functions of each other. So they cancel out like this. So this is equal to theta. But we have to apply also the limits. The limits go from 0 to 2 pi. So that's why we get this pi here. So that's the answer. Okay. Now, this was the potential. Now, let's assume that we want to know what is the electric field caused by this ring. Okay. And now, what is the expression? We have dE is equal to k dQ over r squared. Good. But there is also a trick here, or I say trick. The trick is that the electric field is a vector quantity. So the electric field here, it should be a vector which extends like this. A ducative vector to air. Four. Okay, so this is the electric field here, which is DE. Uh, but we can also think about the symmetry of the problem, which looks like because of the symmetry of the problem, what should be the net electric field in this system? For any dq here, there is also another dq here, which creates a dE electric field in this direction. Okay? So the components of this of these electric fields will the net component will have these here and these two here. These components will be cancelled out, okay? And the only surviving term will be these, these two 
with vector C uh, along the x axis. Let's assume that this is the x axis, okay? So let's write the expressions carefully. And uh, let's write the theory effect. Let's say that the DE, or probably I can use this part a little more uh, better. So we have the DE is equal to K DQ. What was DQ? DQ, it was lambda R D theta. Okay? Now this is DQ over R squared. What is R squared? It should be the distance from here to here, which is divided by R squared plus L squared. That's it. Okay? And now with this DE, we have also, it will be best if we just uh, included this component along this axis. Okay? And uh, we have to multiply this one by cosine theta. Now, if this is angle theta, and this is also angle theta between the DE and the DEX. So let's write here. Uh, but, okay, let's make a correction here. Theta, ne kandin theta, it in per door per shpegu, ta hap sirin, që shikojmë tu, te kandin tu t'i vengi më t'i adet, kand the alpha, or the phi, phi, let's call this one angle phi. And if you kandin phi këtu, da është t'i baradvark me te kandin phi këtu të kandin phi, 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 uh, cosinus of phi, cosinus of phi, which is the same the cosine of phi is equal to the adjacent side, this side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, so this is equal to de times the cosinus of phi bring up in the hypotenuse. We have here l times l over r squared plus l squared. Square root, okay? So this is, so so far, this is DE. Now, we can change this one to call this one DEX. If we multiply this right away, with a cosine, because there's only the term missing, we have L over R squared plus L squared square root, okay? So this is DE. I think this is all, and the only thing that remains is that we need to integrate both sides of the expression. If we integrate, the integral sign is of inverse function of the differential, so this means that this is equal to E. So the overall E is this, but we have to integrate over D theta, which means that here we have here 2 pi, and then, uh, help me to identify the terms that are constants, that we can take them out of the integral. So, uh, k is a constant, right? Lambda is also a constant. The radius of the ring is constant. L, the distance, it, it's, not, it's a constant. R squared and L squared are both constants, which means that this whole uh, denominator is also a constant. So the only change, the only uh, term that stays inside the integral is d theta. Okay? So it looks like this is a simple uh, example. So if you take all of these constants, we have here k, l, r, l, with the second one, this is lambda. The first one is the Greek l, the charge density. Uh, theta, it produces a 2 pi over l squared plus r squared to the power 3 over 2, okay? So this is the electric field which is exerted by the, uh, by this ring. Now, I, I hope these two are clear because all we need, so in principle, what did we just do? We're just careful in writing this dq and the, uh, and the distance r. Now, uh, let's think for a moment, this is like this, this is the distance L, okay. Okay, so this would be the, all we can say regarding the, the Gauss laws. 
which is how uh, things develop. But uh, one one final thing that I wanted to uh, to consider is the following. Uh, if you check your notes, I just need to spend uh, one minute for this exercise. So we have, if we had a wire which extends from plus infinity to minus infinity, and you can time me about this, whether it takes a minute. Which, so if this is the number, let's say that we want to find the electric field for this infinite, uh, for infinitely long wire. What did we do last time? We said that the Gaussian surface, it had the radius r here, a length l, and the e, the electric field, times the Gaussian surface area, which was 2 pi r times l, which was the outer component. This was equal to lambda l over epsilon zero. Okay, so it took 20 seconds to get the electric field. And we cancel out a few terms if we do, it looks like the electric field is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over r. Okay? This is the electric field, which means that if the r is equal to uh, 0 0.5 meters, what is the electric field? Electric field would be equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times 1, 1 over 2, because if this was 1 over 2, so divided by 1 over 2 is equivalent to multiplying by 2, this is lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times 2, we get this, we get lambda over pi epsilon 0. And then, what is the electric field when r is equal to, uh, to 2? We say that E is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over 2. Sorry, this is, the distance is 2. This is lambda over 4 pi epsilon 0. Now, we are finding the electric field as a function of R. Okay, it looks like the expression, so if every term here is a constant, it looks like the electric field is proportional to 1 over R. Good. The question here, one, one uh, good question that we can ask here is to find what is the potential difference between, so let's say here, this was 0 0.5 meters, this distance, okay? Then we have another point, which is like two meters farther, four times this, one, two, three, four, okay? So we have this regime here, and the question is, if we put a, uh, but then also uh, to measure the potential difference. We get a, uh, an oscilloscope or a potential meter, we get the two pins, one positive, one negative, and we want to place it here, okay? What is the potential difference that we measure between these two points, which is half a meter away and two meters away? Such difference of potentiality, you know? And by the way, we can also, uh, if you, if you give me some numbers, we can even find exact, exact values for these. For example, the lambda, probably we don't need to do, but uh, we can even work, work them out if we assign the value for lambda and, and so on. But it looks like we have this and uh, this. So how can we find the potential difference? By choosing my but my potentiality, such as the charge to the mass. Any idea how can you find the delta V? So the, pot the potential difference is equal to, it's unknown. We're going to use this expression, E dl. Okay, so from the, from the postulates of electrostatics uh, of the electric field, we can derive this, the potential difference is always equal to E dl which in this case is equal to, let's uh, skip the minus sign for a moment, and uh, let's look at the E itself. What is E? E is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 integral of 1 over r dr. What is the integral of 1 over r dr? 
Estava uma coisa de dinheiro aí, mas Só se entregar ali para o meu orador. So the integral of one over R dr is ln r, the natural logarithm of r. So it looks like here we're going to get the lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times ln of 2 minus ln minus ln of 0 0.5. And this ln of a minus ln of b, it's also equal to ln of a by over b, right? This is a property of this, a over b. And then we have two You know, so now zero p p's. So the bar and then we two from zero p p's. And then the bar and then we have the cards. So two p's in per two and the cards. So here we get ln over two pi epsilon zero ln of four. Okay. So we should be a little careful, since I think we could also, uh, we should be careful so that we don't subtract this from this. The potential difference, it's equal to uh, potential difference uh, divided by the distance only when it is a linear expression of R. But in this case, we see that it's an uh, R inverse, R to the power minus one, so that's why we have to do this. Uh, 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 is it clear? Professor, I don't know if I can more than ever the electric field. The key for more. I want to see all the other. But there is one other. Yeah, okay, me. There is one other. Okay. I don't know if I can see the other. I don't know if I can see the other. Quadrat. Atëmorë, Apo në që kam dhe fletore dhe mbajman të kërë dhe rivuam me dhe... Shumë një, përmi, për parë që pa qartë? Jo, jo, atë e kuptohë, atë ishte formula që është minus integrali e dhe lës, atë në të diferencia potencialit, ne këshu si elektri fild kemi marrë atë formula që është pak më lartë, apo jo? Lamda? Po, po, kjo është. Ok, po, hanë dhejtë. I me në rikut, po, ok. Po, po. Pra, që është që këtë elektri fild që është për e të për një të a teori që është shkonga minus infinitin e plus infinit, të fushë elektrike që gjendë për të situatë, dhe së edhe të përta që me në fatë kemi gjendë për një të ypsilon të zero shqipë njësa këtu, kemi dhe faktorin një për njërë, në rejku? Dhe vetën pasaj, integratën një për njërë dërë, dhe gjendë dhe e rës, dhe pasaj rezultatën dhe e tjërë, është në i qartë anit? Pa, pa. Në rejku, për njërë, përinderit për ndërë gj Po dhe po të shikoni pak më kujdes, do kuptojmë të njëtë në gjëbës, shpesoj? Akord. Okej. Sot të 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 të
electric field in, 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 a, in a medium. Or should I take a medium adjourn? So electric field in a, in a medium, the first thing that I can understand is that we're not talking about not in, not in vacuum. Okay? The joy part of the is not going to what does vacuum mean? What is how is vacuum represented in the equations that we have used so far? It is represented by epsilon zero. Okay. So vacuum it has a permittivity which is epsilon zero, which makes sure that the speed of light is three times ten to the power eight. Okay. And how is this possible? There is no, another relationship. One over mu zero epsilon zero. Square root of this. This is equal to three. Times 10 to the power 8. Okay, so this is how uh, one can understand uh, vacuum. But now we are talking about regions which are not vacuum. And these are two. The first type of medium it can be a metal, a conductor. Okay, and the second type of medium is a dielectric. A dielectric. It's a material. Where which can be polarized. Okay, so if we put a metal, so two things they are very they have different characteristics. It's, let me say a few words about dielectric. If it is dielectric, if it's inserted inside the uh, an external uh, electric field, that will be polarized. Okay, but if it is a metal, what happens with a metal? It can have different shapes. If we have an external electric field. The metals have a nice property that the electric field inside is equal to zero. And if this is zero, we have also a charge density rho is equal to zero. So the charge density inside the metal, it's zero, but uh, which means that we're going to have a sigma. So the charges will be redistributed for a metal. But when they are redistributed, they are distributed on the on the surface, okay, and the surface. Uh, when we talk about the surface, the surface is not really a surface. It's a little thick. It has some thickness, where the smallest uh, possible thickness. So the delta, let uh, me call this on T, which is thickness. This would be at least something like ten angstrom. Okay, so it's not zero for sure. What is an angstrom? It's ten to the power ten. So we can go to the power minus 10. So if you have 10 more terms like this, this can even be, it's actually a little larger than this. This is uh, around a micrometer. So this infinitesimally small thickness where the charges can be accumulated on a metal, we are talking about a, a micrometer. Okay? A micrometer is not really small, okay? It, it occupies a volume. And uh, we have micrometer uh, structures in our body we take care about them a lot, and the, the 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 most beloved material of our body, which is micrometer scale, is our hair. Okay, we take care we take good care of our hair. There are 10 to 40 micrometer large structures. So, as the thickness of the hair, that's how much the charge can be distributed over a metal. And the idea we want to give here is that really it's not that thick. Okay, we call it surface area, but it's not zero. Okay, everything any any structure, anything which is built on structure, on atoms, it's really it's not that small, okay? And, and we are really good to analyze these factors. But, and uh, once this metal is put in, a, in an external electric field, uh, the charges, they redistribute. Of course, we say that it takes in, uh, immediate uh, redistribution of the charges, and again, this immediate redistribution is not zero time. It's, it's, it could be something between a nanosecond and a microsecond. So you can expect 10 to the power uh, minus uh, 6 uh, seconds. Things will be redistributed, which also brings the idea that if we have an uh, electric field, which is, uh, which is equal to the uh, function of time, we can measure constant changes of the charge density sigmas over the surface area of a metal, because this is changing as a function of time. Okay? So if this is changing continuously, these charges will be continuously trying to redistribute uh, according to the uh, changing external electric field. 
So this time, at this area, they are not zero. Think about something which is 10 to the power of minus 6, and that's what we are. That's good. Now, the metal and liquid field inside is zero. On the, the charge density inside is also zero. You take this for granted. This is how they are. But now, let's assume that this metal has some sigma on the surface area. And this is the general representation. But uh, meanwhile, let's just consider a good-looking uh, metal. And uh, let's assume that we want to calculate the electric field uh, outside of a, of a conductor if the charge density sigma is equal to sigma zero. Okay? And uh, what do we do for this? We can use Gauss law. What the Gauss law, it states that electric field times the area dA, this is equal to Q and close divided by epsilon zero. Okay, that's what we do. And then, what, what do we do in this case? We can start the Gaussian surface, and this Gaussian surface, it's a, uh, we make a cylinder. Half of it, it extends like here, the other half is on the outside. So this is the Gaussian surface. Now, Another thing that happens in the metals is that the, the tension the electric field is equal to zero. The tension the electric field is the electric field can have a normal component like this and the tension component like this. Now, Josephican tangent uh, component tangent, if Fuchs electric, uh, I should at zero, shut it down like you. The electron intuition is the denotes and the diesel, the electron is the metal. Redistribute short space and barrel energy to the top. And the theater, we can even take this one for granted that the tangent electric field is equal to zero, which means that the electric field here is only in these directions, okay? which means perpendicular to the surface of the uh, metal. So in this case, let's look at this Gaussian surface. We have, if we take this as a cylinder, this area is A. Actually, maybe it's better if I do it like this. So, we take a cylinder like here, and this surface area here is A. This is also A, and assuming that here, this is the intersection where we cut the metal, this is also A. And then, let's apply the Gauss law, which states that EDA is equal to Q and cos times 0, 0. Now, electric field here, the flux of electric field of this area, it's equal to EA. Okay, plus the flux of this area, plus another EA, this is equal to Q enclosed. How much charge have we enclosed inside this uh, cylinder? So from here to here, how much charge is enclosed? Now the charge that is enclosed is only on the surface of the metal, which is sigma. So this is sigma times A divided by epsilon zero. We don't have charge inside because, because this is a metal. So that's why that's all we have. Also, the electric field on this surface here, it's zero. Because, because we said that inside the metal, the electric field is zero. So this is gone. Then the equation is only this. Then this area cancels out. And it looks like the electric field on the surface of the metal is equal to sigma over epsilon zero. Okay? So we derive pretty much everything what is needed for electric field in a metal. So we said that we are not dealing anymore with vacuum. Good. We don't have any more this epsilon zero. We are in metal. But in metal, what are the essential uh, relationships that you should remember that you could have these in exams? Is this electric field inside the metal is zero? Charge density inside the metal is zero. We have this component here, and we have also this electric field, which is tangent, in fact, which is the field uh, pointing out of a metal. Now, this was the first part. This is everything that we need to know uh, regarding the uh, behavior of the electric field on a uh, on the proximity of a metal. Now, we can have other proofs for this, which uh, we can also think 
in terms of the Kirchhoff's law, okay? Nietzsche Kirchhoff. What does Kirchhoff's law states? It states that the line integral over a closed, so we have this EDL over a closed integral, okay? So if we uh, use this, this should be equal to zero. This is what this uh, closed circuit means. So if we are, again, if this is a metal, and if we determine a path like this, if this is point A, B, C, D, and then this, we, we determine this contour, this closed contour, on the surface of a metal. And then this has some width, W, this has also some width, W, this is the length L, and this is the length L, about these, these components, okay? And then we try to determine all of this EDL, which means that uh, we can assume that the electric field, it falls like this and like this, if it exists, okay? Uh, or what we I should do the same with the first, the chosen doing if we think of an electric field in the most general sense, assuming that it has a tangent component like this and a normal component like this, this is what we mean, okay? And then let's try to find the, the EDL across this path. The EDL across this path is equal to E tangent, okay? times this path, which has a times W, okay, times W, which is the length. And then, when we come along this path, this is E normal, sorry, let me correct myself, this is E, just normal, but this is E normal, because the normal component is this, let's call this one E normal, I correct myself, and this is E tangent, component E tangent, E tangent times L is along the path BC plus uh, we come from CD. This is again, uh, this is E normal times W again, which is this uh, thickness. Then we have plus E tangent times L. This all should be equal to zero. Why should be equal to zero? Because we are taking the line integral of E across the closed path, A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. Now, what we can do here is that we can take this in the limit when W goes to zero, okay? If we take this in the limit when W or the thickness, sorry, the, the, the width of this path, if, if we take it equal to zero, we can cancel out these terms, okay? And then, let's not forget that this term this was for the path from B to C. And from path B to C, electric field anyway is equal to zero. So if we are inside here, this is uh, equal to zero, which means that we are left only with this term here. Which means that tangent component is zero. So this is another way uh, to prove that the electric field, the tangent component over uh, uh, in the proximity of a metal is going to be equal to zero. Now we move to the, a new uh, a new component or a new uh, type of materials. We go to the other one, which is a dielectric. Now these dielectrics, they are materials like a piece of glass, a piece of plexiglass, a piece of rubber a piece of paper. These are all possible materials which uh, uh, re re respond to an external electric field in, uh, in different ways. And uh, in order, so what happens is that if this is the material and we have an electric field which is approaching from one side, we have a redistribution of charges in different uh, ways.
So we have these dipoles, and if this creates, this means that we can have a net surface charge on this side and another net surface charge on this side, and the charge density inside the dielectric is uh, is going to be it can be different from uh, from zero. And uh, regarding these, so we have dipole moments. So this is how a dipole moment is defined, and let me just, uh, I guess we did not do before, we have not done before the dipole moment in this, uh, in the class. No, no, it looks like we have not uh, derived it. And probably it's a uh, it's best if we first talk a little bit about the dipole moments. Now dipole moments they look they look like this. We have uh, uh, um, a couple of two pay of two charges which have opposite charge, one is plus and one one is negative. And uh, if they stay at a distance, that uh, that co co constitutes a, a dipole moment. Now dipole moments we see that a lot in uh, in nature, because especially uh, if you remember from the courses of chemistry, we can have a molecule which is oxygen, O O. We can ask a question, what is the dipole moment of oxygen, of O2? Oxygen is your genital year, or solution. Does oxygen have a dipole moment? So here, we have two oxygens that have an equal number of electrons, which are distributed over their uh, orbitals. But if we think for a moment, CO, carbon oxygen, Carbon has an atomic number of 12, and uh, oxygen has an atomic number of 16, which means that one has more electrons than the other. So in this case, the electric cloud, ele electron cloud of carbon is something like this, and the electron cloud of oxygen is larger, okay, because it has more electrons. So this means that we can immediately uh, consider that uh, any pair of electrons of, uh, of two uh, elements that can be found in the Mendeleev table. If they have a different number of electrons, we immediately have a dipole moment in here. Which means that with regard to this course that we are doing electromagnetic field theory, and to another course that we are going to do very soon, which will be the ele electromagnetic wave, when we do the interaction of, the, of an electromagnetic wave, which we represent it by a photon like this, and uh, as the wave is propagating in one direction with electric field pointing up and magnetic field pointing in this in, uh, in such a way so let's assume electron vala uh, is an electric field electric field is like this this means that uh, this electric field vector which is in the photons or which is in the light of sun so even when the light of sun is coming to toward us it has an electric field component which interacts with material and it interacts most with CO when compared to OO, to O2, to oxygen, uh, normal oxygen, or normal hydrogen, which is H2. We have uh, N2, which is like uh, around uh, three quarters of air that we breathe, it's nitrogen, it's N2. Uh, electric field vector, it does not interact with H2, O2, or N2. Okay? The reason is that this don't have a dipole moment. But carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, for example, here, not carbon dioxide, that one, it doesn't have a moment too because uh, they are oriented like this. They are symmetric, so it doesn't have a dipole moment. But we have water, which we care about, the water. Water has a dipole moment because water, it does not look like this. If water looked like this, 
it would be symmetric, but no. Water is rather something like this, which means that we have a huge electron cloud here and less here, which means that we have a net dipole moment in this direction. Okay? So, uh, sunlight, which is the light which uh, all of us we like to have it, we know its existence. It interacts with water, carbon monoxide, but then with H2, O2, N2, and probably CO2, because it don't have a uh, dipole moment. So now we see what the dipole moment is. Okay, so dipole moment is like this, but uh, the tricky part, or the essential part, which uh, uh, makes possible to have a full understanding of the dipole moment, is that these are very close to each other, and the fields that we care about are uh, located at a very far distance. Okay, so, if this is a type of moment, so it's a, it's a mathematical uh, regime, or maybe this is not the best word, where we consider the potential and the electric field for distances much larger than D. Okay? So, it's not that we have a, a positive charge and a negative charge, and we want to see what is happening here. Okay? We don't care about what is happening here, but rather we are considering the distance here, point P. And why do we say this? We say this because often these dipole moments, since they are made in the structure of, of matter, where the distances are very small, we want to measure not their effect on the nearby components, but far away, which now the, the essential that we are going to analyze is this. What is, uh, let me think for a moment. If we have a point here, what is the potential at this point here because of this positive charge and this negative charge? Well, we could simply say that it's equal to KQ over R plus K, uh, KQ1 plus KQ2 over R. Since the distance is the same, the, the charges are negative, this will be equal to zero. So the potential across this line is zero, right? If you have plus Q minus Q, and also across this line is zero. But the potential, the V, which is equal to K Q over R, is not zero if we move above this region, and we can calculate why it is that. So now, the, so let's see what these terms we're going to use. From the center of the dipole, we call this R. Okay? Now, there are two things that we can do here. First, uh, we can give the answer right away, and we take it for granted. And the uh, second is we can uh, derive this expression, and I, I, I can encourage you that it's really, it's not difficult to derive it. You can even go in over the book. But uh, assuming that we can do this, we can do a good job in two minutes, we can even uh, try to derive this expression. So, what is the potential at point P? That is the, the question. The potential at point P, it will be potential, it's K, Q, 1 over R, uh, let's write this one, R plus, minus 1 over R minus, okay? Because one is positive charge, one is negative. We have factor out the Q out of the, this expression. And we get this R plus and R minus. R plus and R minus, what they stand for, uh, they stand for, so let me see how we did this. The R plus is the distance of the positive charge. And this is V, So let's think for a moment. We have here, we have an angle theta. So if this point P, if we bring this down to this line, okay, what is theta? Theta would be zero. And the potential in this line was zero. But then if we bring this up like this, we go by an angle theta. Let me see if we have used this notation. Yes, we have this angle theta. And then uh, if we are too far, we assume that this distance and this distance, they are equal, okay? So the difference between this and this would be equal to this, this distance here. 
Sarge to distance like that. What are we doing? Some of the distance like this distance here. So which which is also equal to this distance here. We can write this one as the. So let's think for a moment. No, let, let's see what we denote with theta. Let's better denote with theta this angle. And it's going to be also this angle, which means that this is 90 degree. And this is d over 2, because d is a distance between the positive and the negative. This is half of this distance times cosine theta. So, if you draw this on a piece of paper for it for uh, for your own, this is what the the distance will be. Uh, if we go from here to here and from this one to, to this one, so if we use this distance with respect to each other, we can derive that the and if we substitute all the terms here, we can say that this potential is equal to. KQ D cosine theta over R squared. Okay, so this is this is what we can write for the uh, potential. And then we can uh, the electric field will be equal to minus the change of V, which means that the gradient of this potential that we can have here is the electric field. But let's do the extended version. Uh, at least up to the next time, and let's see what equations we get for the let's see how from these dipole moments, which is generated in uh, dielectrics, how we can find or how we can derive the the polarization vector. So, uh, the dipole moment, it's a micro structure. So in micro level, when we have the dipole. If we average out over this dipole moment, we get the polarization. And the polarization, this is defined as the average of the dipole moment. So if we add all this little p over volume, we get the polarization. So this is the effect in micro scale, and we get this in the macro scale. A similar thing happens also in magnets. So if you have a small magnet M or magnet uh, uh, loop in, in the magnet, this gives rise in a macro scale to a magnetization vector M. So magnets are composed of many small loops where the charges uh, go over themselves, and we get this. So similarly, uh, since we get these dipoles, which is reoriented charges in plus, minus, plus, minus, so we get a lot of dipole moments, all of these give rise to this component, which is called the polarization vector, the capital P. So the, and the, the polarization is, is defined as the volume density of dipole moments. So more dipole moments we have, uh, more polarization we get, and uh, because of this polarization, we can derive two important quantities, which is rho ps. Rho ps is equal to the polarization vector times a n. We'll explain in a moment what they are, and uh, we have also rho p volume pv which is equal to minus the divergence of polarization vector P. Now, let's try to explain what, what these are. So this is the charge density because of the polarization, so that's why the step P stands for, on the surface. This is polarization vector dot An, where An is a surface area element. It's the vector pointing at the surface area. For example, if this is the material, if AN is here, it's a normal component, AN is here, AN is here, AN is here. So these are the just the vectors 
which denote the, the, sur the outer surface of a material. And then the charge density, because of the polarization in the volume, this will be equal to minus the divergence of the polarization vector. So now, if we, if we want to look at the units, uh, let's try to derive them. So the charge density on the surface, because of the polarization on the surface area. So this means that China Sierra Kakyo, this would be Coulomb per meter square, okay? At least this. And this is equal to the unit of the polarization. And the polarization itself, it has unit of... So let's have a look. This little p, what is the unit of the dipole moment? It is QD. So the unit of this one, it's equal to uh, Coulomb times meter. Okay, so this is the simply by looking at the expression, Q times distance. And then the polarization is Q times distance divided by meter cubed, because this is per unit volume. So the density is equal to mass over volume, right? So once we divide by volume, so let's divide by volume on both sides, and this would be the polarization, the capital P, the polarization, by volume over volume. We get here meter cube, which means that the unit of the polarization vector is Coulomb per meter square, okay? So we get here also the same. Charge density per surface area is Coulomb per meter square. And it looks like on the other side, we also have Coulomb per meter square. So we are good. The other expression, the charge density per unit volume, it should be Coulomb per meter cube. And this is equal to minus, let's leave the minus sign out. We are just considering the units. The unit of del operator is 1 over m, and the unit of the polarization vector is Coulomb per meter squared. So we get the same units on both sides of the uh, equations. So this was... And uh, of course, uh, there are ways we can prove these two expressions. We can prove why uh, these two are true. They are, and the proof, it comes from the, from the postulates of the electric field again. And meanwhile, let me have a look, we can cover... I think it's also worth, we should, uh, let me see, let's try to find a good exercise. So let's take out just the units, and let's assume that we have an example where We have a sphere which has a polarization P, vector P, which depends on R, on the radius, which is equal to K I'll write this one, let me see what we get here, K, R, K, R. So, it looks like we have a polarization vector which is pointing out at any point along the sphere and it's expressed like this, a constant k times r times uh, a r. So, if we have this polarization, the question that we can ask, so this is a, a sphere which occupies some volume in space for sure, and the question is, two things that we can find, is that we can try to find what is the charge, the charge dis, uh, distributed or uh, distributed on the surface area. So with this polarization vector, find what is the charge here. Okay. So 
So that's the first uh, thing that we can we can try to find. And for this, we use this expression. We say that the charge de density, because all the polarization on the surface, this is equal to P dot AR, because the for a sphere, the normal component is AR. So it looks like we're going to have that this KR, AR dot AR. AR, it cancels out, and we get that this is equal to just KR, okay? So, so it looks like the charge density on, on the surface is just KR. Then the, the second question, or that we can obtain is the following. If we have a polarization which is distributed over the whole volume, what is the charge density inside? What is this rho? If it was a metal, this charge density would be uh, zero, but this is not a metal, this is a dielectric, which means that we have a charge density because all the polarization inside the volume, and this should be equal to minus the divergence of the polarization vector. Now, the divergence of this polarization vector, first thing that we have to figure out is what is the dead operator in, uh, in spherical coordinate systems. Now, just for a moment, I want you to, uh, probably, you already have, uh, if, let me show you, let's have a look together from the book. So the dead operator from the, for spherical coordinate system, it's this expression. So we can take a note of this one. It's right, this one in the middle of the board. So the operator of this one, this should be equal to minus sign, we keep it over there. So we get here one over R squared, del over del R, R squared AR, okay, if we move on like this, plus the next term is one over R sine theta. Sine theta, d over d theta times, but in the meanwhile, I just, I can say here that this is equal to So I hope uh, you all looked at this expression. We have also something like a theta sine theta, okay. A theta sine theta plus one over R sine theta. I'm sure you're looking at my screen for the moment. Derivative of A phi. Let all the check camera press Oh yes, I will. But I was assuming that I wanted to look at the at the screen. So yeah, let any person who should connect a camera team up here. You're presenting. Bom. So let's go back here. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I was writing the, the exact correct uh, the correct expression. So we should all do this okay, because uh, this is going to be a little tricky. There are not something to be memorized. What is the dead operator in all the coordinate systems? But at the beginning of this course, uh, I I wrote a vector on the board and I asked you to find uh, actually I asked you to find to look at the curve. Okay because you need to apply the Stokes theorem on, on that vector. I hope you have written it and it will be like a good exercise for you. But now we are not writing the dead operator, sorry, we are not writing the curved operator, but the dead operator. And the dead operator is like this. Meanwhile, this polarization vector, every vector, the spherical coordinate system, is written as the component along the AR times its projection, right? plus the component over A theta times A theta, plus the component along the A phi, right? Now, we are given this, which means that A theta is equal to zero and A phi is equal to zero, okay? Which means that in these expressions, this is all zero, and probably, let me see how much you see up here, and this is also zero, okay? So what we are left with is that we are left with Let's continue like this. This is equal, equal, minus 1 over uh, r squared. 
R squared times AR. What is, and by the way, what is AR? AR is this and this. Okay? So the expression that we were given initially, we substitute this AR and we do what is AR times R squared. This is going to be R cubed times K. Okay? So the derivative of r cubed times k, it should be equal k is a constant. The derivative of r cubed is what? It's 3r squared. Okay? The derivative with respect to r. And then this r squared cancels out with r squared, which we are left with minus 3k. Okay? So it looks like the charge density inside the sphere because of the polarization per unit volume is this, okay? So apparently, we found these two uh, quantities. Now, the, we can also, so if this is the charge density uh, per unit volume, what is the total charge? If we ask this question, what is the total charge uh, inside this sphere? What should we do here? This is a constant, so I guess the total charge it should be equal to this times the volume. So we can say Q is equal to such the limit spheres. Such the limit spheres is scattered trade at here on Kuba there. Four third pi R Q. So we multiply these and we get minus four pi k r cubed. So it looks like the total charge inside the volume is minus 4 pi uh, r cubed times k. Okay? Uh, yes. Now, this is up to the surface area. And it looks like it's a, it's a negative uh, charge. But then, what could be, what is the, the charge on the surface area? So it looks like inside, we have negative charges a lot. Negative, 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 negative. But then, what happens here? So if we have this charge density, what is the surface area of a sphere? Take a simple function sphere. Is it 2 pi, uh, 2 pi k r squared? No, it's 4 pi r squared. So the surface area of a, of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, which means that if we multiply this area with the sigma, we get 4 pi r cube k, 4 pi r cube k. So it looks like what I'm getting to just positive and what do we get? The total charge apparently is equal to the charge on the surface plus the charge inside the volume, so we get zero. So it looks like uh, if, if the dielectric does not have a free charge inside, and if the charge is di redistributed because of the, an external field, which responds through the creation of the polarization vector inside of its dipoles, the total charge will be zero. But the only thing that happens is that it's negative inside, or you get a lot of masses on the surface uh, area. Okay, so this is what we get for this specific example. I hope, I think you have also uh, examples in the, uh, in the book regarding the, the polarization. And uh, let me think, let me see what, what we have next. So we are given the polarization, we can find the charge distribution inside.
And uh, uh, I think the class might be coming to an end, but uh, I hope that we wrote this uh, exercise, probably I can erase these parts. Professor? Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but we have another lesson in one minute. In one minute, okay. Uh, it would be best uh, if you had uh, reminded me a little before, but let's go. Okay, so from the then the only thing that I want to uh, note here for you is that uh, we have this relationship that the divergence of the electric field it's the rho v over epsilon zero. This was one of the postulates. Okay, this was a postulate, but then under the external electric field we expect to get also some rho inside the volume because of the polarization, okay? So this is something that comes depending on this, uh, this term here. But then this is equal to... What class is the other one that you have? Shall I make it ahead? Uh, Digital uh, electronics. Digital electronics, okay, that's good. So, uh, from this, from this uh, postulate, you get this new term, which is coming up because the material is a dielectric, okay? Because the material being a dielectric, we get this term, and you take this to the other side, and the overall expression, it can be written as a dead operator, but I think we can write this one also next time. Meanwhile, if you have any question, you can, uh, you can communicate by email. So all we want to come to is that in this way, we can define that the space on vector D, which is equal, it has a relationship between the uh, electric field and the polarization vector. So the polarization vector, it gives rise to this new uh, vector field, which we have de defined it also as the electric field flux, not electric field intensity. So that's one way to relate actually the intensity of E with the flux, which is D. Uh, okay, so since you have another class, uh, I want to thank you for your attention and uh, see you next time. Okay. Okay. Thanks for, thank you again. Bye, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye, teacher. Bye. Have a nice day.